Welcome, everybody, to Paintings for Modern Masters. Um, we will be exploring the explorations and uh, inventions and questions, ways of working of various modern painters as a way of opening up wh what does it mean to paint? What are a variety of ways uh, that people have explored uh, in the last 120, 30, 40 years? And uh, as a way for us to start to uh, open up our own uh, field of exploration, inquiry, investigation. Um, so I understand uh, this series of Painting for Modern Masters um, as giving us a sense of how can I explore? What's my way of working? Um, so I'm coming from a place where I, I've got my skills. Uh, I've been working for, for quite some time now and I can, I can make an image and it, it's okay. And, but I want to, I want more. I want to explore more. I want to, what does it mean to make a painting? What are some of the ways that these great painters in the past have done that? So that's how I understand, uh, this series of painting through modern masters. And, um, we will be starting with Cezanne and moving through uh, a variety of different painters. Um, at this point, we'll go and work with Cezanne and then I'd like to move to uh, Giacometti uh, in a few weeks and then Soutine and look at some of their questions. And the reason why uh, I'd like to start with Cezanne is because with Cezanne, the painting changes its function. Until, he, until Cezanne's work, the, the story of painting, the story of the painted image since the time of the Renaissance was uh, as if an objective rendition of the world, even if we know that it wasn't. M Monet talked about his painting as if he'd never seen another painting and opened his eyes and saw the world afresh and this was his experience of the world. Cezanne's not doing that. With Cezanne, we overtly have an image that is clearly dealing with a landscape or a figure or a still life, but also clearly being a subjective response to that situation. So with Cezanne, we start to have this mixture of the painting being both uh, 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 grappling with or investigating this outer world, but through the subjective, there's an objective subjective dynamic occurring on the painting. That is the painting. And of course, this is happening at the same time that there's the advent of photography. So paintings don't need to memorialize. Uh, in the same way and create some kind of objective testimony to occurrences and they get freed up to be in some ways more clearly overtly uh, creative and poetic and uh, that opens everything up for the 20th century and all kinds of like, cubism, Matisse, all kinds of modern experimentation. So what I'd like to do for the next uh, few weeks is 
Uh, I'm going to start today by explaining, looking at some uh, Cezanne uh, painting and explaining how I understand his project. What's his equation as he's painting? What, what are the things he, what's he trying to do? What, what's Cezanne doing? Then demonstrating what that looks like as I understand it, first in drawing today, hopefully, and then working on a painting for, we'll see how it goes, two weeks, maybe three weeks, probably a couple weeks. And then we'll, from there, shift, uh, d depending on, on the group, d shift into the next painter. So, um, I will be explaining things, and then periodically I'd like to open it up for questions through either unmuting or chatting, and so you guys can stay with me on this. Also, this is going to be recorded. Uh, I, I'm recording now, and uh, in a day or two, it will be uploaded to YouTube, so you'll all have access to go back to it. Okay. So I'll start now. I'm going to look at some images from this book, uh, John Ruwald, uh, Cezanne. It's a great, decent book on his life, and the uh, imagery is good, and you can find it uh, through Amazon, used or on remainder, and it's not expensive. Okay, we have, we try to do that. Yes, Dave Hickey. Perfect, I'll look for that. An air guitar, I suppose. Okay. So, I'm going to open up uh, some images so that we can do a screen sharing. And it's here. And I will start with this. And I will come back to here. And That's not what I want. I want this. That's what I want. Screen share. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully you all can see this. This is an, uh, an early still life by Cezanne. And, um, you know, we've got uh, a couple of loaves of bread and we've got some, uh, some eggs and cloth and knife. And now it is, it's, it's moody. It's, it's, uh, you can see his marking. So he's, he, you know, he's, he's pushing an edge that way. But in terms of his composition and putting the image together, it's pretty straightforward. Here's another one. You know, things are where they are. Here is the board and the cloth. And it's, it's, it's rather graphic. And it's got a dark black kind of brooding quality to it. But um, in terms of his later work, uh, in terms of the composition, uh, things, things really change. Uh, th this is a, a late watercolor. This is a year or two before he dies, I believe. And so here we see uh, some trees. There's a river. There's a house back there. Uh, there's the bank here, and uh, we can see he starts with some pencil marks, and he's doing that all along, and we started a tree right here, and then he moved it to there, and then he moves it to here. So he didn't, like, start over. He just kept going. Well, you know turn the page or get another piece of paper or something. But he, instead what's happening is he's just incorporating the changes as he goes. He's looking at the motif and he's exploring it and he is going forward with that. Um, and he is looking at the situation and marking in relation to the motif through this whole rectangle. So there are two things going on 
or really three things going on as as Cezanne is working. He is responding to the situation, to the motif he's looking at. There's we've got trees. But he is also responding to the developing composition that's occurring in this particular rectangle. So he doesn't know his composition when he starts. That is, he knows that he's going to do these trees and the river and the house, but he is not, he doesn't know uh, in such a set way, like we saw in those first two still lifes, how the eye is going to move through. We have a visual circuitry here. Think of the yellow, we start to see yellow. We go blue, green. And he's, he's responding both to the objective motif in front of him, the landscape, but also to the developing structure on this particular rectangle. And his response to both the objective motif and this rectangle moves through his own subjective experience, what he called his little sensation. Here's another watercolor, another late watercolor. And again, you can see that this negative space isn't just left over space he is sensing the structure of all of this as he goes so that there's a sense of purposeful there's there's purpose to what is being untouched, what's left, what remains, just as what's being put down. It's all in a kind of uh, dynamic together. We'll go over that more in a, in a moment here. This is an early landscape. Uh, again, uh, that kind of moodiness, that the black, the dark. Here's another one. Now here he's he started, I believe he's in his 40s, he's friends with Pissarro, and uh, Pissarro takes him out and instructs him on impressionist technique. So Pissarro has been painting now with Monet and Renoir, and Cezanne goes outside, and it's a, it's a whole other world. Here he is uh, responding uh, freshly uh, to his actual visual experience, there's a sense of, uh, of, of air and, and light. His experience of light doesn't last. He moves, he retains the uh, love of immediate perception, but he becomes more engaged with form and space. And we'll look at that in a moment as well. Now here, this is an early, I mean, not an early, this is a, a beginning of a, painting. We see him laying things out. You can find this at the Met, uh, I believe. And we can see that he's laying down these, these verticals and the horizontals, the diagonals, and even the, the clouds and the sky and the open space here. He's creating a sense of visual rhythms as we move through the rooftops and the greens and the blues. Now, where these marks are and the way the eye is responding to them has to do not only with the motif that he's seeing, this village on the side of the hill here, but it also has to do with this particular rectangle. If this rectangle was more square or more horizontal, these rhythms and the way they function together would be very different. So he is finding his 
placement, his visual structure in relation to the motif he's seeing, but also in relation to the uh, rectangle that he's working on. And he wants the right shaped rectangle to fit his visual idea, what he's interested in, in this, what he's looking at. I'll skip that. Um, let's see, I want to go to, let's see here, we'll come back to that. Okay, we'll go forward a sec, and one, two, okay. So here is a still life um, of, a, of a blue vase, and there's a lot going on here that has to do with, um, Cezanne's project, perceptual project. And when I say perceptual project, I'm talking about that Cezanne is more interested in his actual perceptual experience than depicting according to his knowledge. What do I mean by that? For instance, we see here's a plate. Well, we can see that that's a, a very awkward, distorted plate. It doesn't even fit together. According to our knowledge of how a plate is, that's off. But what Cezanne is painting is his visual experience of looking at this side with that, this eye, turning his head and seeing this side. And so he, what happens is he, what is he seeing now in this moment? And what is he seeing now in this moment? So as he goes to explore the background, sometimes it looks a little greener, sometimes a little bluer sometimes a little lighter. And he's allowing all of these different perceptual experiences to gather together into the image. He's allowing for, in fact, he is exploring the ongoing changing experience that's really occurring. As opposed to saying, well, I know that that wall in the back there, it's one consistent uh, tone. I should just put it down as one tone. I mean, that's, right, that's what I know. But his perception keeps changing. So he's putting down another attempt and another attempt and another attempt. There was a critic who was positive uh, uh, during his time who described Cezanne's work as a sum of corrected mistakes. So here, if we look at the fruit, there's another perceptual exploration going on. Now here, he is dealing with, where's the, where's the edge? You know, it keeps on, comes and it goes, and it, he's, he's, it keeps on fluctuating here, where, you know. Well, he's trying to find some kind of formal, solution or expression of his experience of seeing with two eyes. That is, when we look with two eyes and we pay attention closely to our visual experience, the edge of everything is fluctuating because our brain is working to synthesize the image from two different eyes. And so there's a kind of fluctuation going on all the time, even though one arm might be dominant. The edges of everything uh, continue to shimmer and it's trying to deal with that. Now that's going on very much so here. So we have the edge here coming and going and here, it, it doesn't even, it's like, wow, we're, it just disappears. And if we look at this edge, it doesn't really quite line up with that edge. 
So he's trying to explore his actual visual experience as opposed to his knowledge of how the world's supposed to be or how the world is constructed in some kind of uh, um, uh, conceptual sense. Now, getting back to what we were talking about in terms of composition, he's taking his, this whole perceptual exploration and trying to give it a formal structure in relation to the rectangle that holds in some kind of wholeness. That is, there's a kind of dynamic equilibrium. There's a wholeness. But there's, there's a movement as we explore, and then there's a wholeness, a balance. Let me give you an example here. We've got this, this, this blue vase of the flowers. We've got the fruit here with this weird plate. We've got a bottle split smack in half. Wow, really? And then over here, we have, this is either a, a, a window or a mirror, and we've got, perhaps this is Wayne's coating over here. But what I find particularly interesting is how this brown, these two notes here, become so critical for the overall visual balance of the image. If you take your take a finger or blot out or cover up that brown over on on the right here just blot that out there everything is kind of off balance it becomes crucial for the visual dynamic now let's go back i want to go back to that watercolor of the riverbank Now, if we talk about, or if we think to ourselves, yellow, there's a sense of like a visual circuit through this whole rectangle that goes to the edge, to the edge, it moves through. And over here, it's almost, it almost seems almost gratuitous here, this yellow. But what he's doing is he's as if welding the visual circuit of his eye through the situation to the four sides of the rectangle. So we move, we hit the side, and we come back in, and we're, we're moving through. And our eye keeps on moving. Or if we talk about, say, this blue, green, dark note, and we were moving around, even up right up there. This is the edge here. Oops. Right. And the empty space also. And we see that in the next one as well. So that his, he's doing these two, he's trying to answer to two different sets of demands. His actual ongoing, fluctuating, changing experience of his perception of the motif, and at the same time trying to put that in place in a way that creates a sense of dynamic equilibrium, of a, of a sense of structure that holds, that maintains a sense of balance, structural visual balance. So we talked about wanting to do an impressionist painting, but with the structure of a Poussin. Well, Poussin's structure, his compositional structure was impeccable. It was solid, geometrically solid.
let me add another another element to Cezanne's project, as I understand it. We see this here in the way there's a frontality to the water. The way this situation seems to be facing me. This isn't receding back into space like foreground, middle ground, background. That water is tipping up towards me. There's space, but it's, it's more like a shallow space or a, um, a space that is facing me. Here's another one. So we have the water is is back there, and yet when we when we when we when we look and experience this area, it's really coming and tipping towards me. And this is Cezanne working to find an expression visually for his experience. He's opening experientially to his visual perception. And as he opens, the world is meeting him. He's opening and the world is meeting him. And the world is coming right up to him. And so he's working with that experience with the water of that kind of frontality. And so with Cezanne, the, the canvas, again, it's, it's no longer functioning as a window onto an objective world out there. The canvas becomes an arena to express our subjective experience. And with Cezanne, that's in a subjective experience of his perception. So here, in terms of the composition, here is a, a boy with a hat and a red vest. And we've got this, um, you know, the curtains. We've got an odd crop of the chair, but the side of the of the seat is working really well in terms of that uh, diagonal coming through visually. And we have this wonderful arabesque and we got this very long arm. So there's a distortion there in terms of the boy's arm, but it's a distortion that really fits the visual structure and composition. So things will change according to the needs of the uh, compositional structure. Here's another, uh, again, there's a girl sitting in a garden and the way form, that is her hat and her head, is in a sense embedded in the space. If we look Here, the way the background slips into the hat. So he's trying to move into his actual experience that goes perhaps even in a way contradicting what he knows in his conceptual mind. Let's see what else we got. Let's take a look here. Okay, a couple more. Um, let's see, back to here. Where are we going? Okay. Here. Here. This image now. Here is, here is his, uh, a putti, a little sculpture here on a table, and he's looking down on the floor. And we've got some canvases back here on the floor and a 
perhaps another painting of a sculpture, or maybe that's an actual sculpture, and we've got a still life up here. But look at how he's, he's using this rectangle and this kind of bouncing off of the sides as the eye, there's this great symmetry or, you know, uh, uh, right in the center there. And then uh, the way we are moving through the rectangle, almost like billiards, the way where our eye hits the side and comes back in, all in relation to this uh, uh, visual uh, frontal symmetry here. Okay, so at this point, what I would like to do, let's get out of this and stop the share. Um, maybe before I move into a, a demo, are there any questions about what we've been talking about up, up, up to this point? No, Jordan. Yeah. Jordan, like right. end it. End it. This is fantastic. Like we have had so much information. Like let it end it. End it? End the whole end thing? It. End the whole thing. I'm not going to do a demo? <sighs> We're overwhelmed. Don't do a demo. It's, it's drawing. It's simple. You, you have, all right, do your demo. Go. It's, it's, it's only been a half an hour. All right, man. It's okay. Go. People can watch this again. Go. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute this, and then we're going to go to another screen. That is this one. Am I here? Yes, good. Let me put in the headphones on, the, on my laptop so we don't get that echo. There's no echo here. I get it. Yeah, it's a lot of information. Yes, yes. I know. I won't do yes. a lot. I know. I won't do a lot, I promise. Ugh. Draw for a draw for us now. A little bit. Now, do we have any anything on this still life? Can you see it? No. No. How about this guy? There you go. Right? Good. Yes. Sweet. Okay. So I'm going to allow my eyes to roam through that still life. And I'm going to mark in relation to how my eyes are moving. And in relation to this rectangle, okay, that's a little better. Yeah, go. This is the red plate. Back here is the is the edge of the table. This is the the vase. Here is the white pot, the rim of it. Here is another, this is this here. Here is the handle. Over here, I'm, this is this. And here's the edge here. This is the side of the table. This is this apple down here. Red vase, I mean, red uh, glass cup over here. 
the cloth green bottle cloth edge of the table stem of the bottle corner of the table with the green back there blue bottle green bottle apple fold fold Red glass, apple, shadow of a fold. So I'm trying to wed together the way my eye is moving through to the four sides. Now, I need something here. This fold here, apple, here's an app. Here's a, this is an apple, another apple over here, fold, fold. So I'm trying to get a visual dynamic, a 2D design that moves through this thing in a way that runs parallel to the way my eye is actually experiencing this visual situation. Can you see that? Should I do that in charcoal? You probably can't see it. Should I, right? Charcoal? No, no, it's pretty good. It's good. We can see it. Good. Okay. So that's what I would like to just simple line mark. You could do it in charcoal, you could do it in pencil, where we set up a situation, still life, and just start allowing your eye to roam in relation to the things you're seeing, the spaces between them, and how that occurs in a given rectangle. Starting to play with this back and forth, with these two sets of demands of our perception and our compositional structure with this particular rectangle. So I'm going to, in the next couple of weeks, do this with paint and tone. Questions? Anyone? Mark? Question? Sure. Do you want existential questions? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you you have given us like eight weeks of of information already. So man, just like let us sit. Send send us off. Listen, I'm Please email me if you have questions about any of this. It is recorded. It will be uploaded the next day or two. Uh, go over it. Uh, look at Cezanne's work. I recommend finding a reproduction, a color reproduction of a still life painting by Cezanne. And just sitting down with a sketch pad, pencil, and start to make marks has your eyes moving through that how you're experiencing his particular uh still life composition and just follow and just see how is he moving our our eyes through it how is he relating to the four sides of the rectangle D doing a drawing of the reproduction will help 
sort of getting into his game. So that would be great to do. It would also be helpful to set up a simple still life and just play like I'm in play. Set up a still life and you're kind of looking and you're bouncing and dealing with the four sides. Send me your questions. If you've got imagery uh, that you're working on, send me JPEGs. I'd love to see. Um, yeah, okay. Well, it's a great start. I look forward to continuing and we'll move into painting next week uh, through the lens of Cezanne's project as I, as I understand it. Uh, thank you all, I hope you're well, and um, we'll, we will continue next week. Take care everybody, be well. Bye-bye. Excellent, excellent, excellent.